This video is presented to you by CXO Learning Academy, a learning initiative by CXO Math. Generally accepted accounting principles, that is the GAAP gap, provides guidelines to accountants in preparing the financial statements. This video will focus on the assumptions part of gap. They are the economic entity, monetary unit, time period and going concern. Economic Entity Assumption The economic entity concept is also known as a separate entity or entity assumption. This assumption separates the stakeholders from the business itself. The business is its own entity. We can assume that the activities of the owners of a business are kept separate from the activities of the business itself. For all practical purposes, they are two separate entities. Some examples of economic entities are corporations, company, government, hospital, or even a partnership firm. Monetary Unit Assumption The Monetary Unit Assumption tells us that only those transactions can be recorded that is measured in monetary value, that is there is a currency amount assigned to it. As economic activity can be measured only in terms of currency value, hence only transactions that can be expressed in real money terms are recorded. For example, a fixed asset like car or a building can be recorded in monetary terms, non-quantifiable items such as employee skill level, quality of customer service, morale, market leadership, brand recognition, quality of management, etc. cannot be qualified, hence cannot be recorded. One of the major drawbacks of this assumption is the effect of inflation on recorded amounts of currency. For example, a rupee invested to buy an asset 10 years ago is considerably more than today as purchasing power has declined over the years. The Time Period Assumption the primary purpose of accounting is to provide the necessary information to enable sound economic decision making. Hence, time period assumes that it is possible to report the complex and ongoing activities of a business in relatively short, distinct time intervals such as the quarter ended May 31st, 2010 or the six weeks ended May 1st, 2010, etc. To put it simply, the entire economic life of a business can be subdivided into stakeholder specified time periods monthly, quarterly, half yearly or yearly. One of its uses is that comparisons can be made in performance with prior like for like periods and the business strategies can be changed in regard to any identifiable trends. It is imperative that the time interval or period of time be shown in the heading of each income statement, statement of stockholders equity and statement of cash flows. For example, profit and loss account for the year ended December 31st, 2011. Going concern assumption. Going concern assumption states that an entity will remain in business and carry out its objectives and commitments and will not liquidate in the foreseeable future. This helps the company in deferring some of its expenses until a later period. In the absence of information, it is assumed the entity is a going concern. This assumption assumes that a business will continue to operate for the foreseeable future, allows costs and revenues to be allocated to future accounting periods provide a more realistic value of business assets, allow fixed assets to be written off proportionately over the useful life. Hence, depreciation and amortization are used. Plant assets recorded at cost instead of liquidated or liquidation value. Items are labeled as fixed or long term. Thank you for for watching this video. This video is presented to you by CXO Learning Academy, a learning initiative 